The incredible UFO footage by Antonio Urzi has startled researchers all over the world. Nobody had ever seen such clear and plentiful material on UFOs. Analysis and research revealed them to be real objects and of very large dimensions. Are we visited by civilizations coming from the cosmos? Do we finally have the proof? An answer to that might emerge from the study of the Urzi case, a mystery in the Italian skies. The history of Antonio Urzi's sightings started when he was young and initially took place in Tuscany, his native region. During this whole initial period, Antonio did not think of filming his extraordinary encounters. His sightings continued until the year 2000. That year, he moved to Milan and the experiences of Valle Benedetta came to an end. This experience stopped around 98 to 99 because I moved to Milan for work. In 2000, Utzi met Simona Sibilla. After a little while, they started going out and Antonio found out that she shared the same passion for unidentified flying objects. Meeting Simona marked the beginning of a new phase of his contactee experience. He moved permanently to his current little loft and through the horizontally pivoted windows, his fantastic visitations started again. In 2000, I met Simona and my experience started again. It kept going on until 2003, when I bought a camcorder in order to start filming what I saw. After the first videos in 2003 and the incredible series in 2004, in 2005, Antonio filmed one metallic disc. It appeared again at night time. The sighting was dated April the 30th. In the dark sky background, the UFO hull stood out. The movements, the light reflections and the shape were similar to the disc that appeared on the 3rd of December 2004. Actually, it even seems to be the same object, although the second one was less visible due to a darker sky. The aircraft carried on its maneuvers in front of the camera for about 10 minutes. Anyhow, the two discs filmed in 2005 are less sharp than the nocturnal sighting on the 27th of November 2004. I had the chance to film two supposedly metallic discs in a dark sky. The background was different from the footage of November. In fact, the sky looked reddish, almost amber-coloured, like the disc itself that was illuminated by the city lights. Even though the first series of film in the period 2003 to 2005 was extraordinarily sharp, Antonio had no intention to show them around. Nevertheless, at the end, he became aware of their exceptional value and of the importance of a real contact attempt by an extraterrestrial intelligence. So he decided that it was worth spreading his case out. He got in touch with some national and international researchers, but due to a series of misunderstandings, they did not achieve a detailed investigation. At the beginning, the desire to spread out this material was so strong that the approach with regard to some researchers was detrimental due to my wrong attitude, as I had no experience and I have often been aggressive. The only person supporting him in that period was Giuseppe Garofalo. Giuseppe, Beppe to his friends, was also convinced that the Uzi case should be investigated by other researchers too and should be made public. In November 2005 then, he met with the researcher Pierre Giorgio Carria. Uzi was not present. My reaction to Garofalo's account was utterly incredulous, at the edge of skepticism. I could not understand why a case with such important material could still be unexplored. At the end, though, Garofalo convinced me. I presented the case to Giorgio Bongiovanni, with whom I have been working for many years, and we decided to involve Jaime Maussan in the investigation. As soon as Carrillo showed me Urzi's material, I acknowledged its extraordinary importance. I was surprised too for the fact that it was still unknown. I reckon the footage is real. For that reason, we have involved Maussan for the research. 
After scanning frames in the film sequences, Maussan understood immediately that it was a case of terrific interest. So he decided to come to Italy. The study of the Ötzi case and the divulgence of his extraordinary experience changed for the better. The first meeting took place in March 2006. The reporter was impressed by the frank personality and the open-mindedness of Antonio. Another element that struck the attention of Mausan was the fact that Antonio did not ask for any reward at all for his footage. When we investigate personally, we damos that the testigo is real. When we investigated him personally, we realized that the witness was real, genuine. He's not lying. He does not want money and isn't after fame. He puts his name behind each video, exposing himself to risk. These are all the elements I look for when analyzing a case like this. If I get an extraordinary but anonymous video, it's worthless. When the author has his name and surname, as in Urs's case, I think it gains an extraordinary value. Antonio showed Maussan other material shot by him. This increased more and more his astonishment for the incredible quality of images. In his videos, UFOs are the biggest, the closest, the sharpest I've ever seen. Moreover, the object lets him shoot them, so that their features and details can be perfectly observed. For this reason, I think they're really impressive. After the first positive analytical results, Maussan started to spread out the material of Ötzi's experience. Through his program, Los Grandes Misterios del Tercer Milenio and others, on his magazine and in the numerous conferences held in Mexico and in the USA, Antonio's footage amazed millions of people. The news spread out, so other international television stations showed their interest for the Italian case. A Japanese TV station sent a troop to Italy in February 2006. While the investigators continued studying and spreading out the results gathered, Ötzi's experiences went on. The videos continued with an increasingly significant impact. After the first trip in 2006, Maussan went back to Italy several times to carry out further research on Ötzi. I came to Italy, to Milan and Livorno, to meet Antonio's family, and I discovered that he used to see these objects since he was a child. The adults did not pay very much attention to him when he was young. However, as he grew up, little by little, the people close to him understood that something unexplainable was really happening. Since then, they have become testimonies themselves. Thus, Maussan also met Antonio's family members, his childhood friends, as well as witnesses that have seen UFOs with him. After my 35 years' experience as an investigator, I reckon that his witness tells the truth. After having interviewed hundreds of people, one can recognize a person telling the truth from somebody lying. Now these people, all those I interview, they're spontaneous, transparent and faultless answers. They did not realize that I used to do many simple cross-questions. I can conclude that we're in front of a real case and real testimonies. In 2007, Antonio amazed everybody once again. On the 29th of April, at 6.50 p.m., he noticed a dark object outside the window of his loft. At the end, 
the disc seems to suddenly disappear. Actually, Antonio switched his camera off and then on again. Considering the time, I wanted to have something to eat, so I went to the bathroom to wash my hands. And to my greatest surprise, while looking up through the windows, I saw in the distance that fantastic object. I immediately grabbed the camera that was near my computer and ran back here. The object was still, so what I did was to go straight to the window and open it. I switched on the camera and started shooting. I zoomed in and the object started to come slowly above me and I followed its movements. I kept trying to film with the maximum zoom, then I enlarged the range. After that I stopped recording and switched off the camera in order to grab a stool and carry on filming the object while moving southward. Unfortunately, the object disappeared while I was stepping on the stool. During the sighting, you could clearly listen to Simona's voice. Corri! On that occasion, Antonio asked me to call my grandmother because when he films whatever kind of object, he would not like one, but 10,000 witnesses. Putting together all the elements of this sighting makes it one of the best documents filmed by Antonio Uzzi. Studying it closely, you can notice the strong resemblance of this object with the ones filmed at night in 2004 and 2005. A guess could even be that it is the same aircraft, a further recurrence that makes the Ertzi case comparable to other important contact experiences of the past. Me parece que el caso de Antonio Ursi es uno de los más extraordinarios. I think that Ertzi's case is one of the most extraordinary ones in the history of the unidentified flying objects phenomenon. It has special features similar to the cases of George Adamski and Billy Meyer. Tenemos diversos tipos de videos que se ha tomado, algunos casuales, accidentales. We have different kinds of videos. Some of them are casual, accidental. Others are made by dedicated people that managed to film possibly as many videos as Antonio Urzi. But nobody shows the peculiarity that these objects really pose for them. They seem to remain there still, remaining well visible as if they understood that somebody is shooting them. This is an evidence that if shown to people, it could produce some change, a reaction. This is the reason why I consider it a case that must be observed with great interest by the world investigators community. And the reaction of investigators, as well as of the Italian and international audience, is extremely positive when looking at Uzzi's footage. In Italy and abroad, the Uzzi's case is currently regarded as one of the four most important cases in the world. To my opinion, it is the most important. At a conference held in 2007 in Washington, USA, after showing his footage, there was a standing ovation. Rarely, audience and investigators have been able to see such spectacular ufological material. After the initial analysis carried out by Garofalo, Uzzi's footage has been analyzed also by the Italian National Ufological Center. I have had the chance to analyze Antonio Uzzi's footage and I have found no evidence of manipulation. Neither as digital manipulation, such as CGI, nor as model manipulation. La cosa interessante è che questi oggetti sono contestuali all'ambiente circostante, per cui riflessi. The interesting side is that these objects are contextual to the surrounds, so reflections are well placed and fit the background. The footage on the 29th of April 2007 has also shocked the American expert Jim Delatosso, one of the mythical figures of ufological research among the top professional analysts of UFO photos and films. He has a long-established career, having even collaborated with NASA, in particular with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. That video is one of the ones that's the most interesting of the latest group that I've been looking at because 
there's more than one thing going on than just the picture that's through the lens. There's the conversation that the photographer is having room. He's very excited about what's happening. And when you feel that truth coming through in the video, you have a sense that that's harder to fake. Uh, images, pictures, those can be faked and we can find that. But faking that passion, that acting, I analyzed the videos, looked at the fingerprints, electronic fingerprints that are necessary to see if it had been superimposed, no evidence of that. The camera movement was interesting in that it, it had human dynamics to it, not faked in a computer. And the contour, the shape of the craft, the analysis of the edges and the light reveal that it's a large object, not a small object. So I like that case. And maybe find out who they are that are coming here and what they want. I'd like to meet the guy, go there, stand by him when he takes it. The Antonio Uzzi footage successfully passed the laboratory's examinations. Nobody can assert with certainty that these aircrafts are extraterrestrial, but the hypothesis is to be taken into serious consideration and, valuating the facts, it is the most likely one. In such a multi-case record, spheres could not be missed. They started to manifest from the very beginning and are a very constant presence in front of Antonio's camcorder. They are made of light, black, white, single, or in small groups. And, as we have seen for the metallic disks, the typology is identical to objects filmed all over the world. This rich gallery was still missing the astonishing flutiers, but 2007 turned out to be full of surprises. On the 23rd of September, flotillas made their first appearance. Timo, il cielo tempestato di sfere. Dappertutto, dappertutto ci sono. Guarda, guarda quante. The white spheres were at a higher altitude than those in Mexican footage. However, also in this case, nobody in Italy had shot something like that before. Mamma quante, Simo! On the 30th of September, another flotilla appeared, and Antonio's emotion was overwhelming. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. C'è la flotilla intera, Simo. Guarda, se ti abbassi è pieno, 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 pieno. Both on the 23rd and 30th of September, Simona was present. On that occasion, looking at the flotilla, I was happy to be able to film. In fact, I had a camcorder too. So there were the two of us capturing these objects and there were so many. It was a great thing. You could feel strong emotions. Antonio Uzzi's ability to spot and film unidentified flying objects of any kind remains unrivaled. The only one that could be compared to him is the Mexican Arturo Robles Hill. In his footage, you can see not only spheres, but also an ebony, a supposedly biological entity expelling the spheres that form flotillas. On the 8th of July 2007, Antonio had already filmed an ebony during a visit to his family in Tuscany. No. That time, there were no spheres. He caught them again in 2008. In 2008, flotillas appeared again. It happened on the 28th of September. 
That day, the extraordinary traffic in the sky was particularly active. Unebani. First, Antonio filmed a white ebony, then a flotillas, and finally, he sighted another ebony of a spectacular fuchsia color. The object remained very high, but you could clearly see spheres coming out from its interior. The exceptional event has never been filmed in the skies of Italy, while in Mexico, this phenomenon has been widely and clearly documented several times. As in Tuscany, also in Milan, other people, either family members or friends, were present during Antonio's sightings. Antonio called me and I saw two light spheres close to each other, flying side by side. During another night, there was one on the left side near the mountains with an intermittent light. Then I've seen another sphere of light that was right in front of here, whose light went dimmer and dimmer. I've had an experience with him in Milan. One afternoon we went for a car drive when he told me, look up, see what's there. I tried, but at first I could see nothing. Then I tried to look harder and I spotted a golden disc standing still. I was very excited, I could not believe my eyes. Seeing an object like this in the afternoon with a blue sky. In 2003 we started sky watching. We have seen many luminous objects above us moving acrobatically and jerkily. In 2003 I used to often visit Antonio and Simona's house and I have seen shiny objects with them. Thus, beside analysing Antonio's material, Garofalo has also given a direct testimony of sightings. But there's more to it. They also captured them together. The year 2008 did not just bring flotillas and ebonics in front of Uzi's camera. On the 13th of March, just after 6.30 p.m., Antonio noticed a disc hovering in the sky in front of his window. He rushed to get the camera and filmed a new extraordinary exhibition. Just like in previous times, the disc movements were clearly impossible for any conventional terrestrial craft. Sudden stalls, fast changes of direction. The UFO is exactly like the one on the 17th of June 2004, even if darker, probably due to the shooting time difference. In the images, you could start noticing black spots. They were the pixels of the camera that had started to burn off, and that became worse and worse in the following months. At the end, the UFO disappeared to the right with an instantaneous acceleration. On the 26th of August of the same year, Antonio received another emotional visit. The disc filmed on the 29th of April 2007 came back. It was even closer, and its maneuvers show even more clearly its extraordinary technical ability. The areas with burned pixels had increased considerably, urging Antonio to change his camera shortly after. The black pixels have started appearing almost faintly since the first months. And lately they have covered the whole screen. The shooting is not very steady because of the difficult position in which Antonio was filming. When Utzi films, he uses the maximum zoom available. On one hand, this makes the object's details more visible, but on the other hand, it does not allow you to appreciate well enough the movements and the context in which the sightings take place. 
During those moments, I feel that witnessing such an event, I try to catch all the details in the best possible way. I don't care about filming a building or an antenna, even if it is of vital importance for the investigation. However, in that moment, the emotion is very high. Such an object, I challenge anyone to not zoom in with the camera. Only at the end of the video can you notice some buildings of the city. Even if they are very large and close, the objects move in such a silence that Antonio gets astonished all the time. One thing that impresses me a lot during these sightings of such large objects is the silence in the background. It almost seems a surreal world. At the end, you see the UFO disappear on the left. Compiling the best frames of the footage, the details of the UFO are visible with great clarity. It has only been a few years since Antonio Uzzi got a camera and his filmed UFO collection is already very rich. Yet his experience continues. I believe that this is just the beginning of a story that will amaze the whole world. I'm here for this reason, trying to know it and register it. The quantity and quality of the documents produced by Antonio Uzzi the testimony of his family, friends and witnesses, the analysis results on the footage and the opinion of researchers, show us that, beside any reasonable doubt, means of non-terrestrial origin are manifesting, and they are getting closer and closer. At the same time, a great number of sightings take place in different parts of the world, like in Mexico, right? And in Italy, and in England too. I think that they're trying to communicate. I think that these intelligences are trying to tell us something. And I want to say it once again, we should try to listen to them. Many fear that space may bring about a threat. A feeling that some sense when they see images like those of Antonio's. I'm very sure that inside these objects there are some people entities that want to transmit just peace and, and love because these are the same emotions that I feel when I film. So, what should we think of cases like this one? An ancient Mayan prophecy announced that, starting from the full solar eclipse which occurred in Mexico on the 11th of July 1991, the masters of the stars would have started to make contact with the terrestrial humanity. It talks about a change that would have culminated in 2012. Ertzi's films are an extraordinary, fascinating confirmation that something is really happening. To confirm this hypothesis, we must also consider the beautiful Mayan-themed figures which appeared during these years in English fields. Certainly also the crop circles are part of the signs of change and I'm also certain that Antonio Urtz's experience is part of it. I also reckon that this experience, considering some aspects, is connected to mine. This is mainly due to the reason why these objects, the UFOs, visit our planet in this moment of our history. They are also a sign of change. They announce it, anticipate it. A change foretold by many prophecies like those of the Mayas, but also those of the Christ. Are we close to a turning point of our age? The signs seem to be here. Will we be wise enough to accept it?